<laughs> no, we ain't doing that. Welcome back to the worst fighting game. It's been a little while since we braved the horrors of the Nether Realm, but we're back and we're in a galaxy that no one ever really wanted to return to. This is 1997's Masters of Terrace Kasai for the PlayStation Singular Ballin. Fun fact, this has been, for the last year or so, one of the most requested opponents for me to battle on this show. But why? This isn't so bad of a game, right? It has a cool lineup of characters, came out during that time where people actually gave shit about Star Wars games, and was made not by some weird third-party trash studio that nobody ever heard of, but LucasArts itself. In and around its release, I remember everyone being pretty hyped for it. A Star Wars fighting game? A 3D one with lightsabers on the PlayStation and steel bikinis? Let's go! That mentality has um, changed in the subsequent 24 years, but we won't really know if Terrace Kasai holds up until we get it in the ring. First things first, a little history lesson. Tekken's success in the arcades, and especially on the PlayStation, was cited as a direct inspiration for the Rebel Alliance and the Empire to clash in this very game. While lots of LucasArts' focus throughout the early to mid-90s was on the PC, the advent of the Shadows of the Empire sub-saga, which saw the franchise branch out to different mediums and genres, made a viable jumping-off point for a fighter. If the actual Shadows of the Empire game on the N64 had gotten people excited, it made sense that a 3D fighter featuring Luke, Vader, and Boba Fett would do that and more. Only problem? The majority of LucasArts employees didn't have a whole lot of experience making full 3D games yet, and even less of them had worked exclusively on the PlayStation, and zero had ever made a fighting game. No one had programmed a game on the PlayStation. We were learning the hardware, how to make art on it, how to program on it, while we were developing Terrace Kasai, said lead designer and artist Craig Rundles. This is probably one of the main reasons the project was doomed from the start, as the fighter is not exactly the easiest genre to jump straight into. Sure, you could look at what other games are doing, but you can't just play a few rounds of Tekken and say, oh yeah, we can, we can just do that. The team used the same motion capture studios that Industrial Light and Magic were using for a lot of the attacks and some special moves, but since most of those were going to be gravity-defying, they had to make up for this with handmade animations and blend the two, which took a lot of trial and error. Accounting for the different heights and weights of the characters was also a technical nightmare, as the collision system made this especially difficult to iron out. You can definitely see some of these flaws in the final game. Over the course of 19 months, the team struggled to get everything up and running, and since there was no arcade release to let them fine-tune and fix things for a home port, it wound up being what it was. And what it was was seen as unbalanced, stiff, and not all that much fun, especially against the brutal AI. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay failed to impress many who played it, and it's for this reason that the majority of review outlets felt that Terrace Kasai was better off in the belly of a Sarlacc. It should be noted, though, that those same reviewers did praise the diverse cast of characters, superb sound and music, and detailed models. While I can't find lifetime sales for Masters of Terrace Kasai, the critical drubbing it received was enough to force LucasArts to cut down this experiment like a disobedient youngling. In the years since its release, it often gets brought up in the conversation as the worst Star Wars game of all time, which to me personally is, is a little hyperbolic, when things like Flight of the Falcon, Bombad Racing, and Jar Jar's Journey exist. I was very scared. But to truly know this dark side of the Force, I have to experience it myself. So why don't we start off with... Listen, Terrace Kasi, Terrace Kasi, I, I don't care how it's pronounced, it has its problems, but the window dressing certainly isn't one of them. From the opening crawl, to the holographic select screen, to the authentic stages, and especially the music, in terms of presentation, it absolutely nails what it sets out to do, which is, um, be a Star Wars game. 
The story is simple but effective. Palpatine, who has returned somehow, is super salty about losing the first Death Egg and decides to take a different tact. Employ Arden Lin, a character made just for this game, to assassinate Rebel Alliance leaders in a hand-to-hand -hand contest? This part's uh, a little shaky, cause like, why would she try to then attempt to kill Darth Vader if she's being hired by the Empire? You know, maybe she should hire another assassin to send a robot to send a bug at that. Uh, never mind. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you think about it for more than one second, which is very on brand for a Star Wars narrative. But the game just needed an arcade mode, so the story doesn't need to make sense. It just needs to be a basic excuse as to why Vader would go toe on toe with Chewie. Yeah, it would have been nice if they fleshed it out a bit more with additional details like uh, Palpatine is hosting a tournament and the winner gets a seat on the Galactic Senate. I, I don't know. Oh, and if you Star Wars nerds try to correct me and say that there is no Senate at this point in the franchise or something, believe me, I don't care. Graphically, the game surprisingly holds up. The models are pretty good considering this was the team's first 3D game. And honestly, this, coupled with the sound and music, make for a nice visual slash auditory package. I can't imagine a Star Wars fighting game on the PlayStation looking much better than this. What I did wish was a bit better though was the endings. Thankfully there are some, so that already places this game far ahead of other games we've KO'd before, but what is here is a little lacking. After defeating Dark Helmet, you are given a paltry 7 second CGI clip of characters doing nothing really. Han and Chewie just fly away in the Falcon, Fett and Lin just kind of stand there, and Thok lives his best life. There's no voiceovers or even text during these, and while I get they're probably going for a Tekken 2 vibe here, it would have been nice if some of these had more of a punchline. Like, Fett assassinates some off-screen character, and then the screen turns around, and you see that it's the king of the Ewoks, and now Fett's their new ruler or something. Look, look. I've wasted enough time talking about all this stuff as it is, so let's just get to the- So here's the thing. At a very basic level, there's stuff in Terrace Kasai. Good stuff? That's debatable, but it has stuff nonetheless. While it fancies itself as a hand-to-hand -hand game, it really isn't. Almost every character has a weapon they can take out which extends their reach and changes their moveset considerably, kinda like MK4 which came out the exact same month weirdly enough. Han takes out his Greedo killing blaster, Leia has a staff, Thok has an axe, and there's obviously lightsabers. It's nice they decided to inject some variety here cause the game needed it. On top of that though is the super bright super bar, uh, sorry, force bar, that dares you not to notice it. This fuels your force moves, which act as the game's supers, which is again a welcome addition. Fett shoots a volley of missiles, the Tusken Raider Hor, haha, Hor versus Hor, does this weird toxic spinning attack, and Luke throws his. Oh no! Oh god, now, now I remember. Uh, when I was a kid playing this game with friends, it would always result in screams of frustration whenever lightsabers would come spinning out. Now while it is still really cheap, it leads to some crazy fun stuff and will often ring out your opponent. In fact, most of the characters have a level 3 like this and don't be shocked, it's what makes this game kind of fun to play. Back in the day, this type of stuff was hated for being unfair or cheap, but now it's poverty legend. The designers were more concerned with making something look cool rather than it being balanced, which is great news for us. Now, in regards to those ring outs, well, yeah, I, I wish they had done something differently here. You bumble out of bounds a lot, the rings are pretty small, and it's just a tough situation when your back is against the uh, nothing. It is the best way to take out the super hard AI that comes later in the arcade mode, but I would have preferred if they had gone with caged arenas or at least ones you can break after a few hits, like in Fighting Vipers or Bloody Goddamn Roar. Aside from that, it's got all the other things you'd expect from a late 90s fighter. Ten strings, weird command motions, etc. But aside from the weapons, there's not much here that's new or exciting. 
If you were hyped to play this in 1997, your brain ablaze with imagined Star Wars battles of epic proportions, including force lightning, chokeholds, and finishing moves, you were probably and rightfully disappointed. I have to admit, all it really does is just tease you with its possible potential rather than deliver on it. In terms of modes, well, there's a decent selection. There's versus, arcade, and practice, but also teams in survival. Yeah, it's no Tekken 3, which did release that same year, but let's be real, everything is no Tekken 3, so it's not really fair to compare the two. I will end on a positive note, though. There are a bunch of unlockable characters. Vader, the aforementioned Leia, a Vex Steel Bikini, Mara Jade, a Stormtrooper, and Jodo Cast. Jo Jodo Cast? With Where's Dash Rendar? Boo! It's here where there is very much a disturbance in the force, but rather than just furrow my brow and not do anything about it, I will. Actually moving your character around and hitting buttons is just so stiff, sluggish, and lacks impact. It's close to feeling good, but it comes off as a Padawan that's a few years away from completing basic training. It doesn't have the more methodical, precise movement of Virtua Fighter, lacks the impact and speed of Tekken, it's, it's like some Someone was trying to emulate what a good 3D fighter feels like just by memory, rather than actually understanding what goes into it. The gravity of the characters is off. There's too much startup on certain moves and not enough on others. These issues permeate just about everything. This is something that has sunk many other games I've covered here before, and it absolutely does so again with Terrace Kasai. This is crushingly disappointing because the music is so good, the characters so iconic, and the general premise so cool, it just doesn't come together in the end. Fortunately though, LucasArts and Darth Icky himself at least still saw some value in the idea because this was not the last time Jedi, Siths, and uh, Gamorians would clash. Star Wars and fighting games would have an on-again, off-again relationship for years. And I'm talking about the real shit, not just slapping characters into Soul Calibur and calling it a day. Revenge of the Sith has what's basically a mini fighting game component that's pretty damn good, which isn't surprising because it was worked on by absolute Chad Tony Barnes. Hey Tony, why did you guys throw a fighting game in there? Because we could. Most of the people we hired as character designers at the Collective had true fight game backgrounds. Our engine was built to do full 3D combat and our characters were built like fight game characters. So myself, an animator, an environment artist, and a character designer just did it in our spare time between the hours of 9pm and 2am. And because we wanted to show how that other game should have done it. <laughs> then in 2005, Studio Gigante makers of Tao Feng pitched a dedicated Star Wars console fighter to LucasArts, complete with Anakin and Darth Maul, but was sadly rejected by the publisher. Hey, what's up with that? The project was part of a set of prototypes recreated at Studio Gigante that included an original IP and Kill Bill in addition to Star Wars. We had a game mechanic that was interesting for sword fighting combat and put this together to see if we can get a publisher interested. As I recall, it got interest from LucasArts, but big decisions always take forever with publishers. Eventually, time passed and we as a team and company moved on. Ironically, after Studio Gigante shut down and most of the team went to EA, then LucasArts pops back up and asked about the project. Damn, okay, well thanks Josh! <laughs> We're not done. The Wii version of Force Unleashed 2 has a Star Wars Smash Brothers mode, which is surprisingly good. And finally, there's Star Wars Clone Wars Lightsaber... Which, not surprisingly, is bad. While LucasArts hasn't made anything approaching a Star Wars fighter in decades, that doesn't mean the fans haven't. Star Wars Force Combat, a fan-made fighter that's been making the rounds as of late, is pretty impressive for what it is and prove that there is very much a desire for such a thing to exist. Hell, even the name Force Combat is way better than Terrace Kasai or whatever Finnish words that 90s 15-year-olds couldn't properly say. Hell, I can barely say it. But staying on track here, I gotta rate him as I see him. 
it's hard to not notice the potential on display here, especially when you consider that this was the team's first attempt at it. Its presentation is on point, its mechanics are alright, if not solid, but it's the stiffness, clunky attacks, weird speed, gravity, you know, how it feels to play which is the issue. So, mainly due to that, I give Terrace Kasai the fairly stinky award. I know you're disappointed, buddy, but at least you're more canon than Bombad Racing. What was that? <laughs> Terrace Kasi. Know of any other intergalactic incidents I can take on in the future? Tongue of the Fat Man, Cosmic Carnage, Xenophage? Let me know in the comments below or on my Twitter, and I'll be sure to knock it the fuck out on the next episode of The Worst Fighting Game. Thank you.